Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Everton show. Well, the Premier League finishing line is in sight. Just four games to go and the final run-in starts on Monday night against Newcastle United when undoubtedly this young man will be part of the Everton side. Seamus Coleman, thanks very much for joining us this week. Welcome back to the first team picture and the message has been the same off absolutely everybody. The outpouring of, of emotion when you return must have been truly humbling. Yeah, very much so. Uh, I think you nailed it there with the word humbling and, and that's truly what it was, you know. Um, you know, it was a long time coming to get back on the pitch, but uh, that night against Leicester is, you know, one of one of my favourite nights at Goodison and a night that I'll that I'll always remember. What were you doing on the edge of the Leicester City penalty area in stoppage time after being out for eleven months? Yeah, look, um, I'd say adrenaline would be the word I used. You know, for that for that full game, you know, I didn't, um, you know, I had, had sixty minutes for the under twenty threes, mm. and that was all I had, and went straight into that Leicester game, and I just wanted to show people that you know the ten months that I had. Out injured wasn't just wasn't just wasted. It was in the gym, making sure that I came back stronger, fitter, faster. And that night, I wanted to show that. And you know, my legs went towards the end, and I couldn't <laughs> pick the final pass out. But uh, no, I felt great, and a night I'll remember. I was at that under twenty three game that you played for an hour in. That must have been a big, big night for you, uh, psychologically as much as anything. Very much so. You know, being out for so long, you you just dream of getting back playing football again. And, and that night. I went into the game feeling great and I think early on there was a tackle that I had to more so for other people to show that I wasn't afraid of, of my leg anymore and you know back as good as new but uh, I always knew going into tackles I think I remember uh, speaking to you early on um, about it um, and I said that that was never going to be a worry the mm. psychological side of it was never going to be a worry and I showed it that night. Was the psychological part of the whole 11 months really tough at times there must have been dark days and um, there was there was a couple of you know the the first couple of days in the hospital when you know you're you're a little bit drowsy from all the medication you're on and um, you know there are, there are a couple of low days but once I got out of the hospital and go back to Ireland I felt great and um, I suppose for me that the hardest bit was uh, you know missing the games missing the games forever missing the Euro European football and and then the, the Irish games as well you know mm. when we were in such a good position and on top of the group and, and unfortunately not qualifying that them nights were that were the hard nights but um the training side of it and cracking on I, I, I got my head around it quite quickly and you know enjoyed that experience does it get tougher the closer you get to coming back because there must be a temptation to think do you know what i'm a bit early i'll try something definitely yeah you're, you're forever in the years of of the fitness coaches the managers the coaches saying you know i'm ready uh, but you know they're the professionals, and I got very look, very well looked after by all the physios here. I've done a lot of work with Carl Haworth, which you know I, I really appreciate it. But um, yeah, you're forever pushing them, but they're, they're the professionals in that regard, and you've got to listen to them. And a terrific, terrific reception from the fans. I know you are a humble guy, a really grounded guy, as far removed from the stereotypical Premier League superstar as you could wish to be. But even the even you must have been surprised by the reception. Yeah, I was. I definitely was, and I couldn't really take it in until it was over because my job that night was to show people that I was back as good as new. So I had to make sure I concentrated on that, and then afterwards I could take it all in. But uh, you know, I was definitely shocked and surprised by by the reception. It was totally deserved, nonetheless. Well, from one current Everton defender to a former Everton defender, Alan Stubbs was at Finch Farm recently, and we caught up with him to see what he's up to at the moment. I'm just being in and around um, a few clubs to be fair, just watching a bit of training and uh, trying to keep myself sane and getting out the house and <laughs> um, you know, so yeah, I've just been trying to keep myself busy busy doing that, keep myself occupied and obviously trying to broaden, you know, your your, your knowledge and trying to, you know, watch a few other um, top coaches in in practice really. Have you not had a belly full of this management lock? I, you know, I, I must admit, I, you know, I've 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 had a bit of a, a mixed experience with it. Really, I had a, I had a, a brilliant time at, at Hibs in my first job, and then I had a very uh, frustrating one in, in my second one. So, um, I made a mistake in, in my second one. It's as, you know, it's as simple as that, and I've, you know, I I, I admit that. Um, but no, it hasn't it hasn't curtailed me me desire to to get back in. You know, I really want to. Uh, get back involved because I feel as if I've got a lot to offer. When you say you made a mistake, then if you had your time over again, you wouldn't leave Hibernian for Rotherham. Is that the point? Yeah, I think I would have. You know, I definitely would have stayed. At, you know, at least another year. I, I felt as if we we put in place a real foundation for the club to mm. to to really 
you know, kick on and, you know, and thank, thankfully they have it. It, it. it was a fantastic club. Um, some some great people there. Actually, very similar to Everton. Really? I must admit, we had a a great camaraderie. Everybody got on well. There was a real respect for for the staff and and the, and the jobs that they did uh, from the from the players and you know and we 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 built that. Managers tend to get jobs because of teams struggling. Mm. That's just the way it is. But yeah. were Rotherham struggling a wee bit more than even you thought? Yeah, I think that the picture, you know, that that was painted to me, was a very different one to when I got in there, and I, and I should have done more more due diligence. I think people around me, I think we've had discussions. Should have done more more uh, background checks into it, you know. But listen, it's not a. It's when you're a manager, the book stops at you. Mm. And and, I'm, and you know it's not about me now saying this or pointing a finger at that. You know I look back on it and and I made a mistake. Um, you know and I, and I I could go into a lot of things um, why, but I don't think it's it's right to 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 air your your dirty washing in public. Uh, I think them them things stay private. Um, I know why. I think people within football will know the reasons why um, but you move on you mm. know you learn and I, and I learned a huge lesson from it um, but one that I've reflected and I think you have to be honest you've got to mm. you've got to be honest in everything when and I think don't think when I look back now there's not a better saying when people you you learn more in 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 when things haven't gone well was Alan Stubbs still at the club when you first arrived Shay? He was, yeah. He was. Um, well, it wasn't the 23s at the time. It was a reserve team at the time, and him and Andy Holden were, were part of that. And you know, he he was very good to me in the in the early years. You know, he was there uh, to give me advice. And you know, a couple of games I struggled in, or a couple of training sessions I struggled in. They never, they never really doubted me. They always believed in me, which was important. And um, did you, know, you always believe in yourself? Yeah, I, I always did. Yeah, I think uh, I think you have to. Uh, you have good days and bad days, good weeks, bad weeks, and even it could be good months and bad months, but uh, the day you stop believing in yourself is the day you're in trouble, so I think you've always got to believe in yourself. It's interesting you say that because I know we've spoken about it before many times, but there's probably not many bigger steps in the professional game than Sligo Rovers to Everton Football Club in the Premier League. Yeah, it was a, it was a massive step, uh, even from my first club, St Catharines, to Sligo was a massive step. I remember, you know, going to play two touch games on a Friday and, and really struggling and I remember getting picked last on Friday at Sligo Rovers and you know, you're <laughs> thinking, where do I go from here? <laughs> but uh, you just keep grinding away and eventually you know, you're maybe getting picked first as a, as a months and years go on and then it was quite similar when I came to Everton. I kinda struggled early on with the standard of it and that was just with the reserves, but you know, I, I adapted and I think I, I adapt quite quick to things and eventually, you know, it, maybe it took a loan move to get my confidence up where it needed to be and, and I kicked on. When you first arrived at Everton from Sligo, did you think to yourself, this could propel me to the national team or did the national team sort of come a little bit later on? I think I probably didn't even, you know, as a boy, you, you dream of playing for Ireland, but I think I just looked at what was the next step and that was to try and break through at Everton. and. And then when I did break through at Everton, then the national team starts creeping in in your mind. But as soon as I started playing for Everton, I knew it wouldn't be uh, too long till I got in the national team. And, and thankfully I did that. You still shame me from Killy Beggs when you go back home though, aren't you? Yeah, shame me. Yeah, I'm shame me to everyone from home. It's, it's shame me and it's quite strange to hear people call me shame. I'm used <laughs> to it over here, but you, you don't really hear it where I'm from, no. It must be pretty surreal, not just for your own immediate family, but for everybody associated who lives in Killy Beggs to have the Republic of Ireland captain from within their streets? Maybe so, uh, Daz, and uh, you know, without you know, just trying to sit, sound humble, I don't really look at myself like that. I don't look at myself any different. You know, I go home and I still mix with the people I always mixed with, I, 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 as you would, and I do the things I always did. And, you know, it's great for the town, it's great for the people of Killy Beggs to have maybe that Ireland captain coming from there. But um, I think anyone at home will tell you I haven't changed. and. Um, the people of Killy Beggs have been great to me, so I like to do as well as I can for the people at home. When, wherever I go, when I represent Everton or Ireland, I'm always thinking of the people at home. Is it nice and peaceful and quiet for you when you go back to Killy Beggs? Or do you get autographs and photograph requests every time you, um, you go out to put the bins out? No, it's, it, the people are quite good. Um, you know, they, I suppose they're just used to seeing me throughout the years. It's not like I go home and go hide and I go home and I go out and about. And The people are great with me and 
no doubt there's people knocking on mum's door for stuff <laughs> to be signed and and whatnot but you know it's always a privilege you know as a as a kid you you, you dreamed of signing autographs so that's never going to change I'm, I'm very happy and, and honored to do so it's an absolutely fantastic football story one of my favorite football stories that's just about it for part one plenty more to come from Seamus in part two when we'll also hear from the Everton ladies manager Andy Spence and also from Wayne Rooney <laughs> Welcome back to part two of this week's Everton show. I'm at USM Finch Farm in the company of Seamus Coleman. We've been speaking in part one about your time at uh, Sligo Rovers and somebody who was a big influence then and is slowly but surely making a name for himself on these shows is the current Wigan Athletic Manager, Paul Cook. Yeah, um, he was great for me. And, um, you know, since, since I left Sligo, I've, I've kept an eye on his career and it's been great to see how well he's done, but I'm not surprised, you know, um, when he came in, I think that's when, when my career at Sligo really took off. He, he made me feel like I was the best player in the league and you know, he liked his fullbacks to, to attack and I still see that today when he's managing Wigan and you know, I can't speak highly enough of him. I think you know, he could have been one of the most important managers in my career in, te mm. in terms of how he made me believe in myself. And, um, he's a football man, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He knows his football and uh, you know, he's, he's, he's well respected in the game. And, you know, I'm very grateful that I had him as manager because he definitely did help me kick on. When you first came to Everton, did you automatically migrate to the younger players, the Jack Rodwells, the James Wallaces, when you first arrived? <laughs> no, I, uh, I probably stayed to myself. I was very quiet. Um, they were, the lads that you mentioned were great with me, but, you know, I, I stayed to myself. I stayed quiet. Um, I was a very quiet lad when I came over. I, I would train, I'd go home. I would never meet the lads in the evening or anything like that. So I probably found the first you know, year or so quite difficult over here but I was over here to do one thing and one thing only and that was try and make a career for myself but the lads you mentioned were great with me but would, would they have been friends at that time? No but I still speak to them now but um, I kept, kept to myself. And your debut, Stadium of Light, <laughs> Benfica away yeah. with a back four of yourself at left back, yeah. Dan Gosling at right back, yeah. Tony Hibbert and Sylvan Distan in the middle. Yeah. What a night that must have oh, been. Oh, what a night. Um, Welcome to professional football. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I just remember, you know, that day getting told that I was, I was going to play. It was an amazing feeling and, you know, it did feel like the big stage that night. You know, the, the stadium, the team we were playing, it just felt like, you know, I've been thrown in at the deep end here. <laughs> but I loved every minute of it, obviously not the result. But, you know, I still, I still remember coming back on the plane that night and, and uh, you know, landing at Liverpool and waiting on our bags and I was low as you can imagine you would be after that and Steve Brown came up to me and he says don't worry about it you'll have bigger nights and little words like that you know you'll always mm. remember and that's something that that I'll always remember and you know thankfully I didn't look back after that. They had Di Maria, David Luiz, Saviola, Ramirez it really was a baptism of fire wasn't it? It was a they were some team I actually don't know how far they they'd done in the tournament that year but they were brilliant and obviously we were down the bare bones but you know, it was my debut for Everton and you know, something I'm proud of. The next phase in your career was Blackpool and it's probably nice for you to see a familiar face from your Blackpool days back at Finch Farm now coaching, Keith Southern. Yeah, it's great to see Keith. Uh, I've stayed in touch with Keith more than any of the Blackpool lads over the years. He, he used to take me in every morning and I would get a taxi from, from my house in Liverpool to, to his house and play with, play with his little boy while, while he got ready and then, and then we'd head off to Blackpool so I appreciated that and he, he was great with me, he made me feel very welcome and uh, it's great to see him back at, at Everton as everyone knows here he's a, he's a great fella. There's a DNA that runs through USM Finch Farm isn't it? There's so many ex-players about the place. There is and you know it's great to see them given a chance to, to go in that next step of their career. He, he was here as a youngster and he's now back as a coach and I think that's that's a great sign of the club and, and something that the, the club should be proud of. But also regular features here at USM Finch Farm. The Everton ladies team, they suffered FA Cup semi-final heartache last weekend when they lost to a stoppage time goal against Arsenal. Earlier this week we caught up with the manager, Andy Spence. Andy, how tough was that to take? It was very difficult to take. Um, you know, it was coming so close and, and running a fantastic Arsenal side as close as we did. Um, and really come away disappointed that we didn't win the game. I think speaks volumes to uh, the progression we've made across the season. Um, to You've be got in. to take positives from it, haven't you? Yeah, certainly. You know, we've got to to look at it and and really reflect and go look at the other teams in the semi-final. Obviously, Arsenal and Chelsea and Man City, and to be in their company. Given that you know, eight months ago we were a WSL two team part time, 
to transfer that and transform that, if you like, into a full-time model and now going to feel like we're competing with the very best in you know the women's game is a um, testament to a lot of good work that you know the players and the staff have put in. Were you mentally prepared to deliver your pre-extra time speech? Yeah, of course. You know, you you'd always think of every scenario before the game, and one like that where I, I try and think of as many what what ifs as possible. That was certainly one of them. And, and as that clock ticked, but when they got the corner, you you have that little bit of a sick feeling um, in your stomach, and you just hope you can see it out. And unfortunately, it fell on you know the Arsenal centre half said who, you know, to be fair to her, got up well and. Um, it was heartbreaking, really, for all of us, and because the girls have put so much into the game. Seamus, next up for the men's first team is Newcastle United at Goodison Park on Monday, and I would guess that Newcastle are reasonably satisfied that it's job done. They'll be in the Premier League again next year. Yeah, I think that the result at the weekend was was great for them against Arsenal, and you know, it's a you know, even though he made a manager Liverpool, he's a, he's a very good manager, and. Um, you know that he's he's done great with Newcastle, so it's going to be a tough game for us, like they all are in the Premier League. But you know, my favourite type, types of games at Goodison is under the lights, so I'm really looking forward to Monday night. And we go into the game having only lost one in the last five, so in reasonable form. Yeah, um, you know, as as players, you'd obviously have liked to to see the Swansea game out. Uh, I was a bit disappointed with myself in that in that performance, but um, you know, y y you want to win games, but. It's important not to lose as well, and going into Monday, especially at Goodison, we'll be looking to get all three points because our form at home has been quite good. Are you your own worst critic, Seamus, after games? Yeah, very much so, yeah. For example, you know, against Swansea, I was very disappointed with my clearance, I suppose. Um, when you've played here so long, you, you, you've got standards, and, you know, I'm first to look in the mirror and, you know, uh, analyse my performance. and. Uh, all in all, I thought I'd done OK, but that clearance disappointed me and I suppose I could have nicked it in the end sort of when I've hit the bar and, and got myself out of trouble. But um, You've hit that too well, haven't you? I have, yeah, and I didn't think I would, I didn't think I would connect with it, to be honest. Um, I was kind of lunging at it and then I've got a full foot on it and another day it goes in, but you know I've got a couple of chances the last few games, so hopefully there'll be one coming soon. And by and large, our form at Goodison Park this season has been very good statistically. Yeah, it has, and you know over the years, I think uh, Goodison has always been a tough place for, for teams to, co to come and I think we slipped off a little bit with that the last couple of seasons but it's important. I think for any team to do well your home form's got to be good and our home form has been quite good and we'll be looking forward to keeping that going. It'd be nice to get some positive results from the last four games wouldn't it, if only for the supporters? Very much so, um, you know, even if you look back to the Swansea game, looking at the, la the next five from the Swansea game would have been you're looking at all winnable games. I know they're all hard in the Premier League, but we owe it. We owe it to the fans, and I think we owe. It. You've got to have pride in yourself as well, and and you want to finish the season strong and and be professional and get as many points as we can, and you know give give, give ourselves something and the fans something to to finish the season on a bit of a high. How excited are you at the prospect of a long-term playing relationship with Theo Walcott in front of you? Yeah, we're getting there. Um, you know we've. We've had a couple of games where we've been good together, a couple of games where we've been quiet, and that's going to be the case because you know we, we haven't played together that much. But he's an exciting player, he, he's very fast, and I think he gives defenders a lot to think about, which, which means they don't maybe think about me as much, which, which can help. So we're working on it and we're talking a lot, and, and hopefully we can improve. Well, earlier in the season, of course, we went up to St James Park and came back with a 1-0 victory. The goal scorer that night was Wayne Rooney. This is his take on Monday Night's Clash. It's an important game. Um, I think the, our last four games are important to us because we want to try and win them. Um, we know Newcastle are in good form. Um, they've done well the last few weeks, picked up wins, picked up a lot of points. And so we know it'll be a tough game and um, we want to try and end the season well, finish on as many points as we can. And um, this is the start really to to them last four games. and. Um, as you said, we're, we're in a, a tricky position in terms of we're not going to go down, but um, we probably are a bit too far away from the European places. So it's, it's important we don't get um, we have no complacency and we stay focused for these games and try and win them. Historically, you do very well against Newcastle United. Even going back to the, the match in December at St James's, that goal there that you scored was the 94th away goal you ever scored in the Premier League. Nobody's got anywhere near that. 
do you look at maybe getting, did you know that for a start off? Um, I didn't know what it was, no. So it's 94 away goals that you've scored in your Premier League career. As I say, that's the most ever. Would you look now at maybe trying to get to 100? Are you someone who does that and has targets and thinks, oh, I fancy becoming? Um, not really. I think um, it is what it is. I think if you get to 100, it'd be great. I've never really looked at records. Um, they've sort of come and then I've, I've looked at them then. But um, no, I've, I've enjoyed playing into Newcastle. Um, scored a lot of goals against them and hopefully I can continue that the weekend. As you said earlier, the floodlights, Goodison Park, night game, the stage is set. Yeah, very much so. We're um, we're looking forward to it. Um, training, training needs to be good this week, and, and make sure that we're going in there full of confidence and and give the fans something to get behind as well. Because, like I said, the under the lights at Goodison, the fans can get right behind us as well. But it's up to us to dictate that and, and start in the front foot. Seamus, thanks very much indeed for joining us this week, and great to have you back in the side thanks as well. Thanks very much. Dave. And that's just about it for this week's Everton show. Thank you very much indeed for tuning in. Do join us again in seven days' time. You've been watching The Everton Show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe and that way you can catch every single future episode.